Good morning. Lovely to see you this morning. I'll give you a warm welcome to church, and uh, we welcome those who are joining us online via the, the uh, YouTube live stream. And if you're not a regular attender with us online, uh, you're especially welcome to join with us. It's good to be back. We're just back from holiday. We've had a good restful time, so we're all bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and ready to go for another season. So let's open in prayer as we commit our time to the Lord this morning. Father, we do thank you this morning for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to come into the house of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, regardless of who's here this morning or who's not here. Lord, we acknowledge that your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst. And Father, I pray, God, that you will help us to turn our eyes away from all that would distract us and to focus on you and to worship you with all of our hearts. Father, I pray this morning that you would help us uh, to uh, worship, help us to praise, help us to bring that sacrifice of praise this morning to you as we rejoice in you, as we praise you for the, the, the uh, wonder of who you are and of your great salvation. We pray for Mary as she comes to minister your word uh, later on, may she know your anointing. May she know, Lord, your grace in her life as she ministers your word. And may you speak a word in season. And may our hearts be uh, open. And may 
our hearts hear what the Spirit of God is saying uh, to us in this part of our lives at this time in Jesus' name. So, Father, we rejoice in you. We praise you and we celebrate your great victory on the cross and who you are in our lives. And, Lord, we commit this time to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Alison this morning is going to lead us. Amen. Let's stand. Morning, everybody. sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb and every knee will bow before him the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 of the Lord Almighty, who can stop the Lord Almighty, who can 
hands we lift up our hearts be in this place today Jesus we worship you
so worthy of it all. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to to thank him for sometimes just not the words the magnitude of who he is and what he's done
that's really is our prayer this morning that God would really fill our hearts and lead us to those around us so Father we do pray that that you we would be people who are filled with your power that people who are build our lives upon the firm foundation of the agape love of God I thank you Lord that your love your unconditional love is firm and we can build uh, our lives upon your promise upon your word upon the fact that you love us and Father I pray for uh, this morning that you would give us a sense of wonder as we've been singing that our lives that we would sense your wonder the wonder of your love I pray God that we would live lives that are full of your spirit full of your power and that we would be able to make an impact into those around us in Jesus name we ask it amen Amen. We're just going to, at this point, receive uh, your tithes and offerings at this point. Um, if you want to give an envelope, you can do so. And there's a whole lot of different ways that you actually can give as well. Um, we have a QR code now. And if you're watching online, if you scan that QR code, it'll take us to the point in our website uh, where you can get all the details of what to do. So let's, let's receive the tithes and offerings at this point. And I Thank you, Alison and team, for leading us in this morning. We'll give you a really warm welcome this morning. And um, I know there's some away on holiday today, but um, this month of July. Uh, so we'll give, give you a few announcements. Uh, there is no youth on this week. Um, they'll not return back to the 20, Wednesday, the 27th of July. Also, the prayer meeting uh, is off this week again. It will not be back to the following uh, Thursday, but there will be a service next Sunday, the 17th at 11 a.m., and I will be ministering the Word. Always remember there's tea and coffee and other nice stuff um, at, uh, from 10.30 uh, before the service and 10.45 
uh, prayer in my office before the Sunday morning service. Then our next prayer walks afternoon will be on Sunday the 24th of July. Sunday the 24th of July, and we'll be starting around 4 p.m. Come to the church, and we've been having really, really, what will we say, really good prayer walks. Uh, maybe really good isn't the best way to say it, but Really, the Lord has been really leading us, and I've been so encouraged about uh, what we've been seeing. We've been meeting up with some people that have been at the church here in time past and maybe have grown a bit cold and maybe not walking with the Lord, and it's lovely to really reconnect with them. And uh, that wasn't really the intention of the prayer walks, but it's been great to see uh, meeting with people uh, on the community as we walk around. Then on Sunday the 30th, uh, 1st of July, which is three weeks from today, we will be holding a barbecue here at the church right after the um, Sunday service. Uh, invite your friends and family to that. You need to put your name down if you're going to come along on the number of people that will be there. Uh, we have some little Sunday lunch barbecue invites, so use them. They're on the welcome uh, table uh, so uh, and also the sheet for signing uh, um, in for the barbecue is on the welcome table. And if you're watching online and you want to come along um, to that, send me a text message, get in contact with us and uh, for numbers for catering. So that'll be right after the uh, Sunday morning service on Sunday the 31st of July. And I see that um, some of you are using your lovely God bless humor whenever we, we put on dietary requirements, and there's a lot of funny and silly things that's on there, um, like all meat, no vegetables, and stuff like that, plenty of steak, and all that type of stuff there. So I, know, I don't know why that happens, but some, one person starts it, and then uh, there's a whole pile of stuff that goes on. Uh, so that's Sunday the 31st of July here at the church uh, the barbecue will be here at the church. So if you have dietary requirements, please do let us know. Um, and we'll need final numbers the Sunday before. Uh, then also um, from this Sunday then, uh, prayer requests will go back to Pamela. So if you have a prayer request and you want it to be, be on the prayer team, uh, I know you've been using Victory Praise Family group chat, then put it back to uh, just send it to Pamela. If you want to be part of the um, prayer team that receives a WhatsApp message, please sign up. There's a sign-up sheet on the, um, at the welcome area. Okay, let's pray over the offering and also pray for Mary is going to come and minister the Word and really looking forward to her coming ministering here. So let's pray over the offering and for Mary as she comes. Father, we do thank you for your, uh, for the way that you have spoken in your word for, for we can come and worship you with our tithes and offerings. And we pray, God, for everyone who has given this morning and those who have given regularly. I pray your blessing. We speak your blessing, your favor, your goodness. Uh, over everyone who has given. I thank you, Lord, that you have given so much to us. You are such an abundant giver. And Father, we return, Lord, these ties with praise, with gratitude, with thanksgiving, and with expectancy for your many blessings that come out as you bless, uh, as we give to you. So, Father, we speak blessing over them. And Father, we pray for Mary as she comes to share your word this morning. We thank you for her. We thank you for the gifting that you have given her. And I pray, God, that you will really just minister to her as she ministers to us this morning. I pray that you will give her utterance, that you will give her freedom in the Holy Spirit, and that she may know, Lord, you speaking through her this morning. And Lord, may our hearts be open, and may our hearts be open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying through Mary this morning. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So Mary, come on ahead. And Mary has spoken at, what, Victory Ladies before, and really it's good to uh, give her an opportunity to hear this morning. So come on ahead. Come on ahead, and then we'll make sure your mic and stuff is all on. Yeah, I think we're all on. Good. Go for Grand. It. Um, well, good morning. Um, let's just, I know Stephen's prayed, but just let's pray again. 
Father, we're here to hear from you this morning. And Lord, will you just fill this room and people's homes online, Lord, with your presence, Lord. Because, Lord, it's you that we're here to worship. It's you that we're here to hear from this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're living in challenging times. And when Stephen asked me, um, would I speak today, um, the war in Ukraine wasn't very old. So it was a while ago when he asked me. Um, and I was praying and asking God, what, what do you want me to say? And at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what's, what's it going to be like in a few months' time? Are we going to be in the middle of a war? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Are we going to be in the middle of a war? And God gave me one word, and I'll, I'll tell you that word in a wee minute. But in the meantime, we have seen petrol prices have gone up from the 140s and the 150s to the 190s. We have seen inflation sitting at its highest rate in 40 years. There's the hikes in gas prices, electricity prices, coal prices, electric, whatever you can think of. Um, we have two new COVID variants. Our government in Stormont is at a slight standstill. And we only have to think of what happened in 48 hours in Westminster this past week. Times are challenging. Times are shaking. But where's our trust? Our trust is in God. And the one word that God gave me for today was hope. And our hope is in him. He's our source. And there's nowhere else to go. And um, Romans 15 and 13, please. And it says here, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you go back um, up just one verse, um, Chrissy, a few weeks ago, was talking about the names of God. And he talked about how each name was, um, <clears throat> each name um, showed a character of God. And hope is another part of who God is. And Paul was writing to Gentile believers in Rome. And he was telling them, and it says in this verse, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up one who will arise to rule over the nations, the Gentiles will hope in him. And he was explaining how that Jesus hadn't just come for Jewish people to be saved. Jesus had come for the Gentiles. And the Gentiles, there, there's an action here. The Gentiles will put a hope in him. So there is a need to actively put our hope in Jesus. It's just not automatic. It just doesn't fall from the sky. But then, if we go back to the next verse again, please. Paul then prays a prayer. Paul loves to write letters, and he loves to write prayers in the middle of his letters. But that's just who he is. And his prayer is, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he wants us that we would know that joy and peace as we trust in God, regardless of what's going on around us. But it's not a one-time thing. We need to keep going back to God every day, asking God for that help and that strength and that hope. And if you go back into the Greek, and I wouldn't even start to pronounce the Greek word for hope, that word hope means expectation. So it's expecting good things, but it's also a word that means confidence. So this God of our hope, um, we can have confidence in him because he is steadfast. He's a rock. I mean, Alison, you picked the right songs this morning. I thought, I don't have to get up and say anything this morning because he is the rock of our confidence. He is, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. He will not change. He will not let us down. And... Um, <clears throat> As I said, that word hope is a, a solid rock word. Sometimes hope in our language gets kind of slightly, it doesn't convey the same thing. Some days we're going, I hope it doesn't rain. I hope I get to work on time. 
whatever. But this word is, is a confident word. So if you could pick up um, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And this is just saying the same thing in another way. And it's a very, it's a very familiar scripture. We all know and we probably learned it in Sunday school as our, our wee verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So we trust in God with all our heart. We trust in God. Um, pardon me, can you put the first wee bit back again? <laughs> Please, thank you. Lean not on our own understanding. The situations that we're living in in these days, we can't rely on our own understanding to sort them. We need God. But God has promised in the second part of this, uh, this scripture that as we bring everything to him, he will direct our steps. He will make our path straight. He will bring the clarity that we need. And then expect him to do that. Be expectant. Be expectant. So Psalm 146 um, Again, verses um, 3 through to, to 9. It says, Do not put your trust in princes and mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground, and on that day their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. The maker of heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them. The Lord who remains faithful forever. That's who our God is. He's faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. And that's who our God is. And we need to keep going back to the word. We need to keep feasting on these scriptures. We need to keep reminding ourselves, this is who our God is. He has promised to watch over us. And I can stand here and I can testify to God's faithfulness to me, his faithfulness to my kids, and now to another generation of Wayne's coming. Um, and there's another scripture in Psalm 147. Um, and verse 10, <clears throat> 10 and 11. And it says here, God's pleasure is not in the strength of a horse, nor is his delight in the legs of a man. But the Lord delights in those who fear him. And again, who put their hope in his unfailing love. And Stephen has already prayed, and I thought, I thought again, Stephen has talked about God's unfailing love. And that's what his love is like. It is unfailing and it is dependable and we can have confidence in that. And it's not just for this world, it's for eternity. When you put your trust in God, he is guaranteeing your future for eternity, not just here on the earth. And that's why Jesus came. John 3 and 16, we'll hardly need to put it up, but we'll, we'll put it up anyway. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And sin separates us from God. But God loves us so much and wants that relationship with us so much that he wanted to bridge that gap. So he sent Jesus and Jesus died on that cross and paid the price for our sins and promised us as we put our trust, we put our hope in him, we'll have eternal life. So going back to verse 13 in Romans 15, are you overflowing with hope? Or is there a blockage in an area of your life? Maybe just one blockage, one area of your life, not the whole thing. Are there things that we're trusting in as well as God? Um, sometimes the things that we trust in, like the sinking sand, can let us down. Um, and life stuff happens. Maybe things happened years ago. And I just wanted to 
now I'm, uh, there's a few things, now it's not an exhaustive list, but I just wanted to, 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 to talk about a few things here, things that might be a blockage in our lives, that hinder God's just from overflowing the way he wants to through our lives. <coughs> and I thought, maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's been a friend or a business partner or a marriage where you have been disappointed or hurt or worse. And there's a line in a song somewhere out in the world and it talks about you've set fire to the rain. So you've chosen to be angry about a situation rather than dealing with the pain. And <clears throat> just want to say that God wants to take that pain today. God wants to bring healing. Um, 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 3 and to 5. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. <clears throat> and anyway, I brought this verse to show that again the scriptures is talking about the compassion that God has for us. And he's the God of all comfort. So it doesn't matter what you've been through, God is able to comfort that pain. But sometimes it's really hard to go there. Sometimes, as I said, it's easy to be angry. It's easy to say, just not going there. And sometimes you can end up with a bit of bitterness there too. But God understands. And maybe people around you are saying, oh, would you ever get up with this? Okay, I just stand with my hand behind my back. Okay, this is...